And let's go to ABC News political director Rick Klein, ABC News congressional correspondent Rachel Scott, and foreign correspondent Ian Panel for a little bit more on all of this. Rachel, we heard a lot of questions there about Russia and how Biden plans to confront Vladimir Putin on things like cyber attacks and human rights abuses. What do you make of his answers there? It seems like he wants to give a little bit, but he's playing a lot close to the vest. I think it's clear that President Biden and the White House, which they have said before, don't have super high expectations for this very high stakes meeting. You heard the president there being a little reluctant to even preview his message to President Vladimir Putin. He said when asked by our Cecilia Vega, who is in the room right now, that the United States will respond to things that they view as aggression, but he's not going to get ahead of himself on what exactly he is going to say. There's been a lot of questions about whether or not President Biden believes that he is the one that could get Russia to sort of change the tide here. We have seen for the past couple of years, presidents slap sanctions on top of sanctions on Russia and still nothing has changed. So the president drawing a pretty clear line in the sand there. This is going to be a very frank and blunt meeting. You heard the president even laughing there, kind of responding to Putin's uh, comments when he was laughing at uh, Biden's suggestion of calling him a killer. Uh, he has said that he has no soul. They have, the two have met and came face to face before. Uh, so it's pretty clear here that President Biden going into this wants to deliver a very stern message, but it's very unclear what the outcome will be. The president just continues to drive home the point that he wants this to be a stable and predictable relationship. And, and Rick, you know, we heard a little bit from President Biden uh, about his analysis of the current political state in the United States because he was asked directly about the January 6th assault on the Capitol aimed at stopping his election. And he went through his analysis of how that impacted his relationship with world leaders. And, and I, found, uh, I, I found his attitude, as I have before on these issues, he takes a very calm uh, as opposed to panicked a attitude about January 6th and what it says about America. Do you think that works with the world leaders? It's a fascinating take, and, and I wonder how much detail he gets into with, with other world leaders, because you're right, that was a bad moment for American democracy. And the, 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 the sources behind it, uh, you even heard President Biden give reference to that, that Trumpism, the popularity of Donald Trump, is the dominant strain still in the Republican Party. That isn't to say they all supported the insurrection, far from it, but the same kind of forces that, that just came close to undermining democracy are still out there. And I think from Biden's perspective now, maybe he has no choice but to compartmentalize that and, and set it to the side. But as he said, the proof is going to be in what happens over these next couple of months. Various parts of his agenda are right now in the balance, and he's trying to link the success of that agenda to the success of American democracy, which is pretty heavy and haughty stuff. So at one level, you're right, Terry, he, he's calm about the, the broad scope of these things, but he has raised the stakes for his own expectations back home, what he can get done, and what that means about the example that you're showing the world. He needs the American people and American democracy to come through for his agenda in his telling, uh, to be able to push back against the forces that, uh, that, that at least attempted to undermine democracy. And, and Ian, Biden was also asked about the potential of Ukraine joining NATO. Ukraine's President Zelensky tweeted what appeared to be a confirmation that it would become a member of the alliance, but Biden sounded like he was hedging on that a bit. Yes, uh, I think Zelensky certainly got ahead of himself. Whether this was just a case of political posturing or not, I guess we don't really know. Uh, he certainly would be part of NATO, but as it was made clear by uh, one of the journalists asking the question, at the moment it doesn't really meet the test. Uh, there has been no NATO announcement. In fact, I've seen a couple of tweets which our own... Uh, team who are out there travelling with the president seem to confirm that this was said by, I think by President Biden, but uh, certainly by someone senior in the White House, that this has not actually happened right now. And I think we would have heard the president say if Ukraine was do going to become the next member of uh, NATO. It's something that people aspire to. He said that there were problems in terms of corruption in the country. The biggest problem by, uh, by any uh, measure is the fact that Russia has annexed Crimea and that it occupies the eastern part of the country in Donbass. So uh, it may be something that Zelensky wants. We know that he wants it. Maybe something that Joe Biden and other NATO members would also like to see happen. But the reality on the ground is I, I just think it would be too provocative. We already saw that Russian military build up a few months ago. This was specifically designed to try and send a message to Ukraine and to the West. Do not interfere too much. This 
is Putin's sphere of influence. But you've got to imagine it's going to be one of the many topics that have to be discussed when the two leaders meet. But, yeah, the bar being set super low for that meeting there, which is always useful kind of political manoeuvring. So I want to go to Rick on that because, Rick, this news just came out. And even if Biden is hedging about this, clearly it's very high on the radar that Ukraine could become a member of NATO. How do you think that impacts Biden's summit with Putin that's coming up just on Wednesday? I thought it was very telling that he pumped the brakes on the idea and, and said, you know, maybe this is something that can happen, but they don't even qualify for it right now, mentioning corruption specifically, as Ian noted, and saying that ultimately it comes down to, to a vote of the full membership. So uh, there's been some confusion um, in the communications uh, directly between Biden and Zelensky in the past. The Ukrainians have suggested that Biden is more in favor than the White House has wanted to say. Uh, I thought it was also telling, though, that he said that um, uh, the president, President Biden, said that, uh, that, that NATO will continue to make sure sure that Ukraine has the capacity to defend itself and, and remain a, a sovereign nation uh, against any Russian aggression. But uh, this, is a, this is a bit of a, a, of a half a step back. It would have been a major, major statement to uh, admit Ukraine to NATO or announce American support for that on the eve of this summit. That isn't where President Biden wants to go, at least not today. Correspondent Rachel Scott and our political director, Rick Klein, thank you all. Appreciate it. Thanks. And you can watch our full coverage of the Biden-Putin summit on Wednesday right here on ABC News Live. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.